some unprecedented moments lately aboard the International Space Station after NASA ordered the evacuation of a four-person crew. So this is the first time, apparently, mm -hmm. something like this has ever happened. A ceremony marking a change of command was held yesterday after an unidentified crew member experienced a medical issue. Departing astronauts are making their final preparations for the voyage home, which is set for tomorrow. Joining us this morning to discuss is Mike Massimino. He is a former astronaut, a Columbia University engineering professor, and the author of Moonshot, a NASA astronaut's guide to achieving the impossible. So you're pretty much the best person to be here <laughs> well, with all of you. those credentials. I'll do my best. <laughs> yes, it's thanks. a lot to live thank up you. to with that intro. Thank you. Um, what was, you know, what's the latest here, and what was your reaction when you first heard this? Uh, well, uh, my, my, I was surprised. You know, as, you know, as you said in the intro, we haven't done this before. They've never returned their crew early from ISS before a medical issue. So I was surprised. Uh, my, my reaction, it sounds like this is the right thing. They don't understand exactly what's happening. They want to do some more diagnostic uh, evaluation of this person. Uh, they, they have a lot of medical training on board. They're in close contact with the medical team on the ground. Usually we can fix most problems that way. But it seems like there's just something about this, whether it's the lack of equipment that you might have, like, say, in a hospital where you could do some more invest investigating. Maybe it's the uh, zero gravity environment for whatever this issue is that is making it more compromised up there. They want to get the person back. And it, obviously, don't, they may not know exactly what it is. And so having that, well, we don't know if it's a really a problem or not, combining those things, plus they've been up there for five months, the operational uh, ob objectives are being compromised. They already had to cancel one spacewalk. So they have another crew almost ready to go. And it seems if you combine all that together, I think the decision was a good decision. Let's bring them back. And let's get another crew up there as soon as we can. So, Mike, what would we see? What will we see when this crew comes back to Earth? Uh, what, what kind of preparations are being made for this landing? Well, there's always a, there's always medical uh, team there, right? So you're gonna no matter what, even a nominal mission, no no expedited return like we have here. You splash down, and they, they treat you very nicely, right there, very carefully. Right? Yeah. yeah, you could, they could bring the boat right up to you, you know, and have a medical facility on there. Wow. The shuttle's a little bit different, you know, but but it was kind of the same same concept where they come and meet you. They'll make sure you're okay. They'll more or less carry you off the spacecraft. They've been up there for quite a while, and they'll be checking them out. You'll have a doctor at least for each person and maybe a little bit more in this case where they might want to do some other evaluations based on whatever the, the issue is. But oh, there's always met a medical team there. There's always... Uh, food and water if you're ready to eat and have something to drink, you know, that's there for you as well. So they'll take good care of them regardless. And I think maybe there might be some little extra things they'll do. They're going to splash down off the coast of California. And as soon as they're ready to travel, they'll probably fly back to Houston. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't even imagine. Like, it already sounds like there's so much physical impact and that you oh, yeah. need med medical right. treatment. Now you have now someone you have who's going through. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah, they're, they're going to need some help regardless. And yeah. in this case, it might be some electric attention to something pay there. We're uh, preparing to go back to the moon. Are, yeah. I mean, a little bit of like, oh man, you know, I, would you want to go? Oh, yeah, I'd go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd probably want to go, too. That's a pretty good trip. Yeah, yes, I like I can really excited. Yeah, yeah, who's no, asking? I'm, I'm there. You know, I thought, you know when, I, when I first became, I became an astronaut in 1996. You were just little children then. Maybe not even born <laughs> back me, then. Man. I was working. But, uh, I was a working well, man. <laughs> and we thought my astronaut class, you know, we thought that one of us would go to the moon and maybe Mars, and that didn't happen. And it was interesting. You thought when, you guys would go to Mars? We thought we were. Wow. On our, if you look at our class patch, flag, you know, you, we had a patch with things we there thought we were going to do. That's you. That's me back on home. Yeah, that's me back. Oh my my, yeah, my astronaut days back on Hubble. But we thought wow. one of us might go to the moon or Mars, and that was the plan. And that, that didn't happen. What was interesting is when this crew was announced, um, the Artemis II crew, they happened to come to New York, you know, mm -hmm. to do some PR the day after they were announced. And I got together with them for dinner, and I saw them, and I said, I was so happy for them. I was, I was so happy that we finally are getting the crew back there. And Reed Wiseman, the commander, said to me, because I understand how you feel, Mass, because I'm going to be even happier I was more happy for them than I was for me when I got assigned. And he said he's going to feel the same way when they assign the crew that lands. So I'm just really thrilled for them. I know all four of those uh, folks really well. And I'm happy great. for I'm looking forward. We'll see when it actually happens. Hopefully yeah. it's going to happen I'm in looking a couple forward weeks. to too because, I mean, yeah. as I said, uh, you know, when we were kids, I'm, you know, I was, I'm, I'm in my mid-50s, you know, astronauts were our heroes. I mean, yeah. we, we, you know, Neil, uh, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, like, yeah. I, had guys, I had those pictures of those guys on my wall. Yeah, me too. And because yeah. of what they did, right? Yeah. And, and it seemed to, I mean, the shuttle missions, and it got, it got very science-heavy, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. towards the end, which I'm not interested yeah. in that. I just want to see somebody playing golf on the moon. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's going to be a lot of science with the moon, too. We can yeah. learn a lot. So yeah. we, got, we got a little bit of everything. But, yeah, that is exciting. It's huge mm -hmm. to be able to be going back there. 
And not, you know, this is a mission, their mission is just going to be in orbit just. They're going to be orbiting the moon. We haven't sent anyone close to the moon in over 50 years, right? So that's, that's a great objective. And then but the plan moving forward is not just to go for visits and come back with some rocks after a few days. It's to settle there nice. and find a source of water and be able to build a habitat there and have a continuous presence on the moon. Similar to what we have now in the space station. So it's going to be harder that. to get back from there, though. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Not a quick six-hour flight. Uh, yeah. Mike Massimino, thank you so much, oh, as always, pleasure. my friend, Thanks for, for being me. with us. Appreciate it.